Good evening, and thank you all for being here. My name is Dahlia Epstein. My three children, whom you have just seen on the film and I, represent one of the many families currently being supported by Grief Encounter. On the 12th of December, 2016, our family was ripped apart without warning by the cruel, tragic, and very sudden death of my husband, Stuart, a wonderful dad to our kids who was just 44. I have little memory of what I did last Monday or the Monday before that, what I wore or the sequence events of events of my day. But every moment of that Monday the 12th of December is etched onto my brain as clearly as if it had happened today. It was a normal Monday morning with everyone rushing around getting ready for work and school. Stuart got up to have a bath and whilst I was getting our two younger children up and ready for school, Stuart suffered a cardiac arrhythmia. As it happens, for no apparent medical reason, his heart just stopped. I begged the paramedics to do everything to help save him. I had no idea at that point what was happening or had already happened. It took me a long time to acknowledge that Stuart died in my arms in the minutes before the ambulance even arrived. This was not how our story was supposed to end. We had been together since we were 18 years old. The 26 years we had spent together was just the start. I kept saying, over and over and over again, this isn't happening. This doesn't happen to us. This happens to other people, people who aren't well, people you hear about this, you read about this, you say how sad, how awful, but thank God this isn't my family. This couldn't be happening to my family. How would I tell our eldest daughter, then aged 13, who was in Israel on a nine-week school trip of a lifetime, that her fit, healthy father, whom she idolized, and she, he, who she had happily waved goodbye to six weeks previously, was no longer alive. As we sat and mourned, lots of people said, contact Grief Encounter. Still in shock, I thought, yes, they'll solve the problem. When there's a problem, you find a solution. They'll help solve the problem, but how do they bring him back? I was an educated, rational thinking, responsible adult who could not come to terms with our situation. How were our kids of 13, 10, and 7 supposed to? But you come to understand that grief takes no prisoners. It transcends class, race, color, religion, and creed. We were well and truly in its grip. We had become a statistic. I knew we needed to confront and work through our grief. Ironically, I learned most about grief from Stuart himself. Just before Stuart and I met, aged 18, he lost his beloved elder sister Janice in a car accident. It is beyond a person's worst nightmare to imagine losing a child. Stuart's parents have tragically lost two. Stuart was troubled all his life by his grief. There was no grief encounter for him. It wasn't until his late 30s, some 20 years after his sister's death, that he started to get grief counselling. I know from first-hand experience, if you don't confront your grief, it will not go away. It manifests itself later in life in all sorts of different mental health problems. Stuart would often say to me, one day you will understand what grief means. But I know this was not how he meant for me to understand it. It is said that death with trauma is like grief with the volume turned up. Well, it was deafening for us. As Stuart's death shaped our life story, we needed to re-establish our lives. We were one family, but four individuals, all needing help in different ways. One child, who didn't want to open up, requested that the therapist should be young and pretty. 
Thankfully, it wasn't our seven-year-old son asking for that. And by the way, she isn't pretty. She's beautiful. I had assumed we'd all grieve for the same person in the same way. But we are individuals, and so is the professional help that we each needed. A combination of art therapy, play therapy, and traditional counselling was provided by Grief Encounter. A confused seven-year-old has different needs to an angry teenager. For the kids' therapy, they in each enjoy private sessions. From time to time, I may be consulted, but it is very much their private time without any outside interference. We are supported as individuals, but also as parents, as we are often the ones who have to wear everyone's grief. We are also supported as a family unit. Whilst I know people may look and even say, you look okay, you cannot see the pain. There are no physical scars. Sadder still, there is no cure for our pain. I am not a single parent. I am the sole parent. You think that death is the end, but it's the life that is left for the bereaved that needs all the care, attention, and love that grief encounter helps to sustain. The pain of death is excruciating for a child. It is truly unimaginable. Grief encounter do so much to ensure those precious childhood years are protected and those special memories kept alive. Our first family day out with Grief Encounter was a fishing day, but this was a chance for me to be the fun one for a change. Stu was always the fun parent, I was the serious one. But here we could just be ourselves. It gave the kids to have the freedom to be with other kids who knew what they were going through. Hearing little kids asking as a way of introduction who they'd lost broke my heart all over again. Conversations that neither could ever have to have, but they knew they could say what they wanted without the fear of upsetting everyone around them, and I didn't have to plan everything. Grief Encounter had dealt with all the logistics. Our job was just to have some family fun. We've enjoyed trips to the zoo and an amazing summer day in the countryside. Grief Encounter really helped to bring the light into a very dark place. Whilst we are very lucky to have wonderful friends and family around us, many of whom I'm grateful to say are here supporting us this evening, too many of the Grief Encounter families have no network of support. Grief is a lifelong journey, punctuated by too many ups and downs. Grief Encounter are there for the roller coaster of life, the good days and bad days, and they stay with you through thick and thin. You may wonder what compels me to share our story. I've never been one to open up much. Stu was the one who wore his heart on his sleeve. I was the closed book. You're so English, he would say, as a native South African. But it's for all those families who've suffered like us. And all those who will sadly wake up one Monday to lose a dad or mum or brother or sister who, like us, need help to learn to live without them. How to function when the world which kept you safe and secure has been destroyed. When I wrote this speech six weeks ago, I had no idea then how poignant or relevant once again it would be. Exactly one month ago today, on Monday the 18th of February, my niece's 14th birthday, my number one fan, who of course was hosting two tables here this evening with her husband, my brilliant, kind, wonderful and unique sister Tanya, passed away while suddenly whilst she was in New York with her husband. I was the one this time in Israel to tell my niece that her beloved mother had passed away. I had always wondered what this moment must have felt like for my daughter, who was on the same school trip in Israel as my niece when Stuart passed away. And here I was, the one delivering this earth-shattering information. 
My brother-in-law is now widowed with two daughters aged 16 and 14. Never in my wildest nightmares did I believe that this could happen once, but twice in the same family, that it would be my niece's fate on that Monday morning to lose their beloved mother, my much adored and rock of a sister. It's the saddest film you've ever seen with no happy ending. Five of my parents' grandchildren, aged between nine and 16, all facing life without a parent. And whilst we may be two steps forward and three back, I know the grief encounter will help to take us all forward and back into the light again. In my former life, I was used to sitting where you are now, thinking, thank God, we'll never need the services of a charity. But with the professional support of Grief Encounter, we have learned how not to succumb to our grief. We have learned how not to bury our heads under the duvet or to seek comfort in a bottle. In contrast to the platitudes you always hear, you don't move on or get over it. You have to learn to live with it if you choose to survive. We have faced it head on and will do again. We owe that much to both Stuart and Tanya. We are who we are and we do what we do because what of what we have been through. We are eternally grateful to Grief Encounter for their ongoing help, guidance, support and love. They are constantly holding our hands and slowly leading us along a path which gets brighter over time. Because of the support from all of you here, Grief Encounter has helped to bring light back into our lives and into the lives of thousands of other children and young families. I know many of you will have had a discussion on your way here about how much you will be donating on your pledge cards, which will shortly be handed out by your table hosts. I know Stuart and I did. But I urge you, please, give that bit more, or double if you can. Whilst that extra I know makes a difference to you, you cannot begin to appreciate what it means to a bereaved child or a young widow. Hopefully, you now know what a life-changing effect it has had on ours. Grief Encounter can help children like mine feel that despite the tragedy which they have experienced, life is still worth living. Please give generously, enough so you feel it. Thank you for listening and enjoy the rest of your evening.